I'm Ikari Turunen, I'm the Artistic Director of the Vancouver Chamber Choir. And I'm here with Eric Banks and Javier Badillo to talk about our new music video called This Delicate Universe. And I'm going to start by asking these two gentlemen to introduce themselves. Eric, if you want to go first. Oh, sure. Hi, I'm Eric Banks. Um, I uh, am a composer and I direct the Esoterics in Seattle, Washington. I am Javier Badillo, and I am a film director and producer here in Vancouver, Canada. <laughs> Eric and I met for the first time in, in Barcelona in the summer of mm -hmm. 2017. Um, I was introduced to Eric by a, a mutual friend, um, and uh, we got on really well, and then, then I heard, oh, sort of, you're a composer, and... Uh, and you always ask the question, what kind of music do you write? Which I think if I was a composer, I'd say, well, oh, that question again. But um, Eric then skirted around the subject a little bit. Uh, but he in the end said, you know, um, I love the music of Richard Strauss. Uh, and I thought, oh, this is the man for my taste. <laughs> and I thought, wow, oh, I said that, that. okay. Yeah, this sounds very interesting um, to do to have a, a, have a contemporary composer name someone like Rupert Strauss. So I thought, well, this sounds really promising. And I said, well, do you have any pieces that you could show me or, or send to me? And, and Eric did. And there was this big, big work, um, uh, work in five movements called This Delicate Universe. And uh, I straight away, I, I just, I, I loved it straight off the bat. Um, I think you'd done the premiere with uh, Conspirare by then. And so you had a recording that I could listen to. And um, I, I really liked it. And I'm always on the lookout a little bit for these sort of pieces that break the normal choral length, sort of, which is four minutes to five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and, and sort of a little bit like, you know, choral symphonies. And I thought, well, this fits the yep. ticket. You know, a piece like that was 35 plus minutes uh, all in one go. The, the intensity that you have to have for something like that is just very, very high. Maybe first, Eric, you could tell us about sort of the genesis of the piece. How did you uh, arrive at the will to, to write this kind of work into these kinds of texts? Sure. Um, well, uh, the, uh, I... I'm not exactly sure of the year, but um, I, when I first read the poetry of Constantine Cavafy, I was really in love with his work. Um, he uh, is a gay poet, um, and he lived uh, for most of his life in Alexandria, Egypt. And uh, he was Greek. Uh, and lived in kind of a, a, a Greek neighborhood in Alexandria, kind of a casbah uh, there. And um, but what, something that's interesting about him is he died on his 70th birthday. I don't know if he planned it or not, but he, like, he's like, okay, we're done. So, uh, <laughs> and um, his life was really interesting. He worked um, as a public servant and um, at, at some point he lost his voice at the end of his life um, for, uh, from, I think, throat cancer but he was unable to speak. And uh, the poems that I first uh, kind of fell in love with were what I call his tryst poems, his tryst poetry. And he wrote a lot of them as an older man, um, reimagining or remembering kind of hookups that we he had with guys, like the secret kind of sexual or intimate encounters with other men. And uh, I, actually put together 18 of these poems in a ballet that I wrote in 2012 called Approaching Ecstasy. And that ballet was performed in Seattle in 2012. And again, in 2017, it was remounted. And um, there's actually a DVD that's underway now that'll be released at Christmas of this uh, entire performance. It was for a string quartet, harp, double chorus in both Greek and English, like the South Universe, and, um, and nine dancers. Um, and uh, it was it was you know a phenomenal experience for me to to have my work staged um, and and received in Seattle by you know sold out audiences. So uh, uh, especially because it was a gay positive work. So when I was going through the poems to to, to write this work, 
I encountered four of the five poems that didn't really fit into the theme of Trist poetry. And I, pu I put them aside because I knew I wanted to write a different work. And um, so uh, it's a little confusing to tell the story because everything's kind of out of order. But um, this work was um, commissioned by Conspirare and uh, it, was, it was premiered in 2015. The, the ballet was premiered in 2012, but um, a lot of the work uh, into the poetry started happening in 2007 or 2008 because uh, I, I found the poems and I found Kavapi before then and I went to Egypt before then. I was in Egypt, um, it was uh, in 2008, exactly, uh, exactly 13 years ago now. So, I, and you might remember because it was the, it was the week or two weeks that the stock market collapsed at the end of the Bush presidency, like <laughs> right before Obama came into office, there's this horrible economic downturn. And I was in Egypt when that happened. So, um, and it was Ramadan. So, uh, so I, uh, I went to Alexandria and I was there for a few weeks and um, I spent time in Kavafi's, uh, the Kavafi Museum, which is his old apartment. His apartment was converted and um, there were manuscripts there and his desk was there and his desk chair was there. There's a picture of me sitting at his desk and he's my favorite poet, so it's like a pilgrimage. And um, when I was there, I got a volume of his unpublished work and in it, I found the fifth and final poem for this cycle, the Stalk Universe. So, and that, that's the, one of the phrases, or, or this is the title of the, the cycle, it's from this fifth, from this fifth poem, the Stalk Universe. So, um, so that was in August and September of 2008. Um, I then uh, set aside these texts and, and, and set aside the ballet text and started working on both pieces. Um, and, uh, even though I won the Del Warren Award to write for Conspirari in 2010, circumstances came about where Craig wasn't able to, and I wasn't able to um, finish the piece or premiere the piece until 2015. It took a long time to write the piece. Um, there were some personal things going on for both of us and it, it just, it became a really um, distended birth. Um, when, it, when it finally happened in 2015 though, it was fantastic. Um, it, it was really well received. Um, they, the Cosmo performed it, and then um, Esoterics performed it, and we released it on the disc Intimas. And then this conductor, Kari Turunen, took it uh, in Finland, and he performed it in Helsinki and in Paris. And uh, then the Swedish radio choir did it with Ragnar Bolin. So, uh, and then this has happened, this, this video. So without my knowledge, a video was made. So, um, so uh, it's, it, the piece has had a life and I, I, I love the piece. It's one of my favorite pieces. So I'm really happy that it's been um, uh, celebrated as much and performed as much as it has. The, um, the theme uh, is, well, well, both things that are delicate and the idea of the universe. Um, and when we hear the word universe, we think of something really big, like this expanse, um, because we associate it with astronomy, with galaxies, with, you know, uh, and, and the, etymologically speaking, the universe really has nothing to do with size. Um, it has to do with focus. So um, I, uh, because it comes from the two parts, uni meaning one and versus meaning turn. So, uh, so when you turn your gaze or you turn your attention to a single thing, it is a universe. And we have other words like microverse or, you know, to, to talk about um, what a universe could be on a smaller scale, but really it doesn't matter. The size doesn't matter at all. It has more to do with focus and attention. So um, in, uh, the, for me, this is a theme that kind of binds together all of the all of the pieces in the in the symphony, and I do call it a choral symphony. Um, I think that it it really, even though it's five movements, it it feels like one. The, the first movement has to do with art and its place in Kavafi's kind of hierarchy of of things that are important to him. Second movement is a stroll through his neighborhood, 
and um, about how um, emotion and place can kind of be combined um, in walking the same streets every day. That's a meditation, and it really is turning your attention to kind of where you live and what is around you. Um, the third movement is about um, focusing on uh, nature. So standing on the seashore and looking at the sun and the sky and the surf and um, having it be uh, uh, <laughs> being distracted by other thoughts, but telling those distractions to kind of go away and letting me continue to focus on the meditation. Um, and as a Buddhist, that speaks to me very strongly. So uh, the whole idea when something comes into your head while you're meditating, and you're like, ah, leave me alone. Um, so, uh, uh, and then the, the fourth movement is uh, about the meditation of a lover. Um, and uh, um, so this is the one that is most like the, the ballet poetry, the tryst poetry. But for me, it's, it's not as sensual as much as it is meditative. So um, there are really beautiful lines in this poem about um, breathing in, inhaling the, the exhalation of your lover, like the breath that, that come out of their lungs goes into yours, and looking at the reflection of yourself in your lover's eyes. So I felt like the, the reflectiveness of that was so astounding, like so intimate that um, I ended up writing a lot of that movement with reflectional symmetry. So all of the, in the English sections, all of the duet, all of the choir has duets and they sing up and down the scale at exactly the same point. So they reflect from each other the whole way. And then the final movement's the big one. And that um, is a kind of a meditation on the beyond, like the afterlife or the, the paranormal or the world that's kind of beyond what we know. And um, in it, there are spirits that speak in tongues that we don't understand. And I, I mean, if for me, it's my favorite poem in the world. So um, I had to end the cycle with it. And I, I, I can't say I completely understand the poem, but it's the one I found. And it's the one that hadn't been translated before I touched it. So um, the translation is really mine. Like it hasn't, it hasn't been uh, tackled by anybody. And it may be wrong, but I like it. <laughs> so <laughs> it was free. Um, but I, uh, I uh, let's see. I, uh, we could talk about musical language, but for me, I think that the most, the most important stuff is about the text. So, um, uh, th those are the five meditations or the five universes in the in the cycle. Great, thank you. Um, I've written sure. quite a bit um, in program notes about the music. Um, of course, it's my views, but but anyone who's watching this and will, would be interested in when they see the video to have a in depth look at the more analytical, then um, you'll find that stuff there, as well as the text and translations, which I think are really really crucial. The English texts are pretty easy to hear when the choir is singing but the texture is quite full all the time so it's not uh, a walk in the park so I really recommend looking at these poems which I think are really wonderful poems um, and and I, I thanks to to Eric and this work I've, I've, I did some reading of uh, Gavafi's poems and, and one thing that really strikes you is is, is how um, bold those uh, homoerotic poems feel still uh, and yeah. in his time this is sort of the early 20th century they must have been quite shocking to many a person <laughs> uh, but but, yeah I mean I think so really beautiful I, yeah I think um I, it's funny because I think that um homosexuality was less shocking then in certain societies than it is after the 50s Right? I mean, I think that it reached like a low point, but I, I think that it might have been more accepted when it wasn't spoken as much about or when there wasn't an agenda to have equal rights or, you know, didn't threaten the kind of straight hierarchy. Yeah, um, yeah I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I call, I call composers or um, poets that work at this time pre-gay and pre-lesbian because there really isn't an equal rights movement or like a, a gay rights movement. Yeah. And I... Uh, uh, but but they're still expressing things. And the thing that's com common to all of Kavafi's poetry is this, um, this predilection for bygone beauty. So um, even when he's describing ruins of an ancient Greek city, it's about the beauty that's found in the ruin. 
And um, for me, the, the recalling of former lovers as an older man is the same thing, like trying to relive this excitement of this experience of being physical and, and being in your prime. So. Definitely. And I, I was struck by when you were talking about the fourth poem just a while ago, um, you were talking about the things that sort of are so um, pre-COVID. <laughs> <you know, laughs> Yeah. Exhalation, yeah. inhalation, uh, yeah. watching the uh, your lover's face uh, close up, you yeah. know, and I, it just felt pretty poignant to me that it actually, that's real life and not, you know, <laughs> the distance yeah. that we're being forced to. Um, and, and this, in a way, this, this whole video is, is um, well, it's not the response, but it's, it's the result of a pandemic choral year for us. Uh, we were able to do choral concerts throughout, which was fantastic, but um, video concert format is not the same as having an mm -hmm. audience. And then at the same time, you got to the point where, okay, now we've, now we've shown the choir singing <laughs> in concert. Um, what's the next step? And, uh, and we decided to, well, well let's, let's sort of, um, step outside what we feel comfortable with and, and see if we could work more towards a music video. And that was when, when of course, Javi was contacted and um, he was on board in the planning from, I think, February, March, I think we began that. And then we did the rehearsals and recording in late April, early May. And then we did a, a photo shoot or a video shoot on the beach, which is uh, the, the majority of the material is from that shoot. That was um, around mid-May. Mm -hmm. And after that, it's, it's been, the ball has been in Javier's court um, and Javier has been editing the material. Um, I'd like to ask you, Javi, now just, <laughs> we can say a few words about the work, but then also sort of, what is your experience with, with all this? Great. Well, I mean, from, from the very beginning, I already, I already was familiar with your work and with the Vancouver Chamber Choir because I had been editing some of your live concerts. Uh, I wasn't participating in the, in the filming of them, but I did receive them in hard drives and I was editing, editing those songs in your previous, um, you know, in the past year or so. And, um, and, and I was really looking forward to an opportunity to do something a bit beyond just the room with the singers, you know, something that had to do a bit more with uh, that ha had a bit more of that cinematic um, storytelling that that I, I, I specialize in that I focus on. So, uh, so we, we started uh, first was um, uh, understanding the text, understanding what kind of material we were dealing with and what, uh, you know, what Eric, what you had created with, uh, with this, with this work and, uh, and listening to it. Uh, I remember listening to it online on, uh, on your record on, on, uh, on that you have on, uh, um, um, on that platform, I uh, forget the name of uh, Spotify. That's right. That's right. So we, we hit it online, and then we listened to it, and then uh, and then I listened afterwards to Cady's version of it, and I was able to like listen to the to the comparison. And I, my background is non choral music, so I you know it, to me is a is a new world to come into into choir into choral music. Sure. But I had um, I, I I'm a musician. I play music. I play uh, music with bands for all my life as well. So I'm familiar with music but uh with make, music making but uh listening to the differences between the your 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 recording and then carrie's recording and and how how the how, how tone and how tempo and how energy all these nuances play such an important part in it and it's like wow we have to figure out a, a way to 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 do this justice to capture this so um, we started brainstorming ideas, visual ideas, it's like what, what can we do within our re limited resources? I mean, we, we don't have, you know, <laughs> endless resources as much as we, we wish we did, but, uh, uh, you know, we have lim very limited resources and say, so, okay, what can we do with this? What can we do with a, ca with a camera and then in the, in the choir? Um, we, we had, we had a, a larger number of cameras to record the actual performance of the choir in the beach, which looked phenomenal. We had 
a lot of movement with the cameras. I, I wanted to make sure that we captured everything in movement, you know, have a, a give it a life. Uh, other than the beach itself, that it was very windy that day. And so the, 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 the trees were back and forth and the, and, the, and the singers were bracing themselves. It, it was fantastic. <laughs> nice. and then we, we captured that. And then once we have that as our base for the entire piece, we were thinking, okay, um, so now we have the words, we have the text, we can now think about what visuals to um, intercut between all the pieces to give it a narrative, give it some sort of a visual representation. Um, uh, and so it, it had to be done in, in broad strokes. It had to be done in uh, abstract imagery. We couldn't, we couldn't um, do it completely to the to the to the letter, you know, on, on the nose, like say in screenwriting, you know, if something is on the nose, it's just a bit too on the on the text. But in this case, we we use the we inspired ourselves from the characters in the story. So um, a, a, we we started off with the idea of a, a, a couple, a pair of, of friends um, who are uh, exchanging creative ideas. Okay, and it is ambiguous in the sense that is it is not homoerotic. Uh, even though we are conscious and we were conscious throughout that it is a, is a homoerotic relationship between them. Um, and in fact, these, these actors are also part of the choir. So they're, in this, they're singing and they're also in the story. Uh, and so what's, what's, what the hook that we wanted to emphasize here was this relationship, this really tender relationship between these two creative young men who are uh, exchanging ideas and, 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 and really enjoying the process of creation, right? And so we're trying to follow the five, the, 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 the sure. arc of the five pieces. We go, long story short, we start with them as young men, right? And then at the end, we end with one of them reminiscing how everything was back when they were young, um, when, when he was young, it was, is representing Cavafy when he was young, a young man writing the poet, his own poetry. Um, and, uh, and at the end, we have another singer of the choir who is a much more advanced age and is reminiscing his life as when he was a young man. And so the juxtaposition of those, those images, or those images um, fit really well with the progression of, uh, of the, you know, the chronology of the five pieces of the, of the of the piece, so I, I can't wait for you to see it. I, I'm I'm quite proud of what we. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> My, uh, sometimes here in May, it, the weather can be really lovely, sort of very, very Californian and and enjoyable. This was a cold day. It was seriously cold, um, and there was a wind blowing from the sea. <sighs> but. But that really did provide us with an incredible, just especially the people with longer hair, how those their hair was blown about. And yeah, so I mean, when you when you do something like this, it's always a risk. If if we just perform the piece and and videoed it, I'd know what the result would be. Whereas this has been sort of an adventure into I don't know, um, but I think that's the only way to move forward, right? That you you take risks and and. Yeah, you take it on the nose if it, if it doesn't work. But I, I do think that, that the, the Carl Symphony feeling is just so cool in concert, <laughs> both for yeah. the audience and, and the performers, which you just yeah. don't get much of it. So um, yeah. I'm really grateful that we could do this and, and hopefully it will encourage other people to, to um, embrace the piece as well.